Hey guys, this is your Trusted Weather Forecast, and today we're going to be talking about my updated 2020 Atlantic hurricane season outlook. This is my finalized version for the rest of September, the whole month of October into November, and things are expected to continue being active after the short, about a week-long break from activity, which if you currently see, there are no disturbances in the Atlantic right now. The only systems are Teddy in Canada and Beta in Louisiana. Before I begin to this, I'd like to ask you to subscribe. About 75% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. So please click the subscribe button if you like weather-related content and hit the notification bell if you do not want to miss a single upload. Let's get right into this. This is the Nino Index, and you can see it's very low. It's just about at negative 1 as of September 23rd today. And that means we are very unlikely to have an El Nino. We are currently having a La Nina pattern. It's already been official that we are having a La Nina um, this fall and potentially this winter. What this means for the hurricane season, it will mean more activity, more U.S. landfalls, and more intense hurricanes compared to an El Nino where there would be less hurricanes and less intense hurricanes. But that is not the case this year and for these coming months. These are sea surface temperature anomalies for the western Atlantic. You can see slightly cooler waters along the Gulf Coast there from Texas to Florida as part of Laura and Beta that made landfall that cooled, sucked up all the hot water there. So it will take a while for that to recover. But in the Caribbean, temperatures are warm. They're warmer than average and they're starting to kick up in temperature too. I will show you the actual sea surface temperatures later on, but if the storms can enter the Southern Caribbean and then enter the Gulf, they will have jet fuel to work with and could potentially cause a lot of damage. And you can also see a, a very blue area next to Bermuda, which means there's significantly below average sea surface temperatures over there lately as a result of Teddy and Paulette sucking up those waters, so activity is likely to weaken substantially if it enters that cold pool. Moving into the eastern Atlantic, you see most of it has been staying average except on the immediate coast of Africa where there are much warmer waters, so strengthening is possible if those systems can kick into some of that energy. These are current sea surface temperatures in the western Atlantic. You can see in the Gulf, it's cooler, about 27 degrees Celsius, but in the Caribbean, south of Cuba, next to the Dominican Republic and Mexico, there's 31 plus degrees Celsius temperatures in the waters. So if any storm can form in there and take some of that energy up, it will probably be very strong if shear and dry air do not get in the way of it. Our next systems that could potentially come up may track into this pool of hot water, but that is way too far out to determine at this current time. This is my general forecast for this the rest of this hurricane season. You can see the blue there in the mid-Atlantic there, going as far north as Canada and including Bermuda, is expected to be inactive, less active than average for the rest of the season. And that orange there you see across much of the Atlantic highlighted is active. It will continue to remain active for the rest of the season. And that red patch there in the Caribbean could be hyperactive with lots of storms having potential to strengthen in this area. And those arrows I highlighted there are the most probable paths of systems should they enter these areas. And the Gulf is also at high risk for any of these systems that can tap into some of that energy in the Caribbean. That's the Shrestha weather forecast for my updated 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment if you want. Goodbye. A quick announcement here, if you do not know already or saw already, I have gotten into close contact with somebody who tested positive for COVID-19. I'm currently in quarantine for two weeks, so video uploads could be increased or decreased depending on how I'm feeling, and I doubt I test positive because um, I doubt I was next to that kid, um, but in the event I do test positive, there will be substantially less videos until I'm negative.